there's such a wide range of people here. There's some uh, CIA students here, there's some high school students, there's some middle school students, and I think you're all, on one level or another, interested in art and design, I assume, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, was a, it was fun this morning for the high school and middle school kids. That's good. I'm, a, um, uh, I'm, I'm one kind of a designer called a graphic designer. And I have trouble explaining to people what I do sometimes. My mom, um, for years, has told people I was an architect because people knew what architects were. <laughs> I'm not a um, but lately, when I'm trying to respond to people who don't understand what it is, I say, you know, it's stuff with fonts. You guys don't know what fonts are, typefaces? Everyone knows what that is, right? You know, um, if you're a middle school student, you know what that is, right? The lettering, stuff like that. And so um, I've been working now for uh, you know, more than 25 years, and um, almost every project I've worked on has one thing in common. At one point or another, I have to decide what typeface I'm going to use in the project. And um, when I was thinking about what I could talk about with you today, in order to show a lot of different kinds of work, because I think one of the exciting things about going into the field of art and design is you do get to um, do lots of kinds of work as a professional. It's not like a fireman where uh, you know, a firefighter just puts out fires all the time. I guess it's exciting on some level, but it seems kind of redundant to me. Um, you know, designers <laughs> can do all kinds of different things, you know. Uh, so I think that that actually is part of the appeal of, um, of the career that you're undertaking, um, uh, uh, that you're thinking about this afternoon. And so because um, um, typefaces are one common element, I thought it'd be fun just to uh, go through a bunch of different uh, projects I've done with the idea uh, of the typeface that is not too esoteric as the unifying thing that pulls it all together. Can you see that screen okay? Is it dark enough for you in here? Yeah. You want it darker than to take a nap if you want? <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to start off. Anyone ever been to Parma, Italy? I never have either. But you have? You have? It's be you have. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's right here. Great cheese, too. So um, this guy had his made his living in Parma, Italy. He was a famous, famous type designer named, an uh, Italian guy named Gian Battista Bodoni back in the 15th century. And he designed this beautiful typeface called Bodoni that uh, if you've ever uh, seen a uh, Armani store at the mall, it's the exact same typeface. So this guy does this, what, 600 years ago, practically 500 years ago, and then 500 years later, guys are walking around hitting on girls in bars wearing Armani t-shirts. You know, it's awesome all happening in Parma, Italy. I'm not from Parma, Italy. I'm from Parma, Ohio. <laughs> I'm allowed to present an Armani class of 1975. This is me. I'm in the back. That's my mom and my dad. This is Easter Sunday, 1969. Those are my twin brothers, Ronald and Donald. <laughs> That's cute. Um, I was good at art in high school, like I bet almost all of you um, are or will be. Um, but what I found I really liked doing was stuff that was that had a message to it, that had words on it, like that was like posters and things. So this is probably the very first piece of graphic design that I ever did that was reproduced. As you can see, it's a um, uh, a poster for um, a play back in Normandy in 1972 called Wait Until Dark, Dollar to Get In, 8 p.m. Um, and um, I had to do all that lettering by hand. I didn't know where you got real lettering in those days. I just thought everyone did everything by hand. But even Jim Batista Bedoni didn't do it by hand. He cut it in metal. I didn't know anything about that at that point, though. But I was about to embark on an education that's lasted, you know, from 1972 till today and will last for the rest of my life, probably. And so I'll show you um, about 26 years worth of work, 26 projects, one for each letter of the alphabet, okay? By the time we go through the alphabet, we will, we will, I think I'll show you nearly every kind of graphic design that one can do in the profession. That might not be true, but it's gonna be very close, okay? Um, so I'll just move it right along very quickly. Okay, so um, each, for each one, it'll work the same way. I'll show you the letter in the typeface, okay? And I'll show you the name of the typeface and tell you um, what project I did it for. This, is, this looks kind of modern, but it's actually very old. It's for, um, it's, a, by a, uh, it's called Accident is Grotesque. It's a funny name. It's called Grotesque because people used to think this sort of typeface was really ugly because it's so inelegant. Uh, it was done by a German uh, boundary called Berkholz uh, back in the end of the uh, 19th century. And I had an assignment from the American Graphic Institute of Graphic Arts, the AIGA, which is like our professional club, 
to do a poster to promote a conference we were having, and the date of uh, the conference was maybe 2001, and uh, it was all for graphic designers who always don't understand whether or not what they do is really important, if it is important, if it's like architecture or like other fields. And so you see that it, um, it says, um, you know, it might be nice to bring down some of the lights on the screen if that's possible. If it's not, don't worry about it. Um, but you see it says design counts there and actually is grotesque, but the real message is the thing in the back, which uh, some of you guys might recognize as um, uh, this ballot that was used in the 2000 election, the 2000 presidential election between uh, um, George W. Bush and Al Gore. And um, you might recall or you might have heard that that came down to um, hundreds of uh, like a, a difference of votes in the hundreds in the state of Florida. And in one particular county, there was this big controversy because a lot of people got confused and thought they had voted for the wrong person. And um, so what's in the background is pure graphic design. It's a classic thing you have to do as a graphic designer. Someone says, fit all this stuff into this space. And then you say, well, there's not enough space to fit all that stuff. And they just say, make it work somehow. So in this case, this lady named Teresa Lapore, not a trained graphic designer, not a graduate of the Cleveland Institute of Art or anywhere else. She was a political appointee to the Palm Beach Board of Elections. She just sat down one day and figured out how to make it fit. And she came up with this idea that um, the way she'd make it fit, because she had two sides of the ballot, would be instead of listing them straight down one side, one, two, three, four, five, six, then straight down the other side, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. She did this other thing where she did one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, right? And so um, uh, in the top position is um, uh, Bush and Cheney. The position immediately below them is Gore and Lieberman, the Democrat candidate that year. Um, opposite them, sort of in between, is a uh, reform candidate, uh, Pat Buchanan, um, who, and it turned out that Pat Buchanan had lots and lots of votes, because lots and lots of people who thought they were voting for Al Gore, the second person down on the left, simply punched the second hole in the middle. You, would, you might do that too if you were uh, in a hurry or worried or confused or nearsighted or over-enthusiastic or something. So um, <laughs> Buchanan actually got, um, you know, a thousand extra votes than he would ordinarily have gotten, the poll seemed to suggest he would get in this district. Um, that led to the Palm Beach County kind of going uh, for um, Bush, that led to the state of Florida going for Bush, it still got, uh, got into the Supreme Court, but then for the next eight years, uh, um, George W. Bush was um, president, and it maybe isn't all Teresa Lepore's responsibility or credit or fault that happened, but it just goes to show you that every once in a while, graphic design actually can change world events. If you try to imagine what it would have been like if Bob Gore had been president in uh, 2000 rather than Bush. It's interesting to think about. So, um, graphic design sometimes seems like the most disposable practice you can have compared with fashion design, compared with industrial design compared with architecture, but in a way sometimes because you're, you're responsible for communicating complicated messages to people, it can actually be sort of important. So that's the longest lecture I'll give you, and I'll just show you a bunch of different examples of different kinds of uh, graphic design that I've done over the years. Um, this B looks like that A, but it's a different type base. It's uh, called News Gothic, designed by this guy, this New Yorker, called Morris Fuller Benton back in 1908, pretty old again. This uh, client here is the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Brooklyn Academy of Music has a building up around it, sort of that looks like Severance Hall, uh, around the corner from here. Big old stone building, except they have nothing but very avant-garde performances. Um, they have like rock and hip hop, and then they blend that with opera and classical, and do all sorts of innovative different things, right? And um, they wanted to sort of show that they did innovative things. So we took this very boring typeface, and then did this thing where we chop it up all the time in order to make it look recognizable. So it's a straightforward typeface, but because we always cut it off on the side or the bottom or the top, it actually makes it look more lively, more interesting. So it's on covers, it's on ads, it even goes off the bottom of coffee cups, on signs, on the outside, signs on the inside, and there we sort of take this typeface and kind of have it play hide and seek around little bits of architecture in their old building. Well, the elevators, you know, the doors, around the doors, and even the uh, men's room gets the treatment. Look at this poor little piece of metal here. <laughs> I'm surprised that hasn't been pulled off by someone yet, but it's still there. Um, 